Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Bamses Podcast. Can you hear we excited? We are because it's episode number 200. Yay! I think I've stopped being surprised by the numbers and just resigned myself to continue plodding along. <laughs> oh, come on. It is something. It's the second one of these triple digit things. It's with two zeros. It matters. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, if we do take a moment to think about it, 200 episodes, man. Yeah. That's that, that's a lot of time. Mm-hmm. That's 200 hours. We won't get back. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The editing takes much longer than that. <laughs> Shush. Anyways, as always, my name is Christian, but hey, you can call me G. The other person making weird sounds is Drac, over in SoCal, where it's nice and warm and disgusting. No? Nope. Well, I guess, you know, temperature's all relative. It was a little bit cool and chilly here, but that's considering I'm used to Southern California weather, so. <sighs> and this week it is an upcoming game. It's because we're at the end of March. And that means we're looking at April's games. We've got ten of them. Drac found ten, I found eight, and that totals ten. <laughs> well, we like to streamline it, because... Uh, one of the things that we started doing when we shifted over to the new format and uh, we're trying to focus a little bit more on indie games. And so we try to find the uh, the top 10 most interesting games that we've found that are scheduled for release in the following month or in the month of April. Actually, the hilarious thing is that this episode is due to go out on April 1st. Um, might be April 2nd, depending on how quickly we can get things edited, right? No? Maybe? I have no idea what day this is, mate. I've been in lockdown for a week. Oh, no, 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 wait. This this episode's actually going out this Thursday, the 26th. Yeah. Never mind. I was confusing this with the interview we've been trying to schedule for next week, so... It doesn't take a lot. <laughs> Attention span of a gnat. Yes, I said it. It's the end of March. It's <laughs> April upcoming games. We've got some Snake Bots, some Dread Child, some God King Master Rituals, some Irish Popper, because that seems topical. Starship Horizons, that sounds terrible. Main Assembly, that sounds familiar. Cyber Attack, Hellpoint, Confusion, and Tidal Shock. That last one's terrible, but we'll get to that. First off, though, April, approximately 1st, but already March 31st, and as well as last year, it's Snakey Buzz, a game of, well, Snake. If you remember that from good old DOS days or your uh, Nokia phones. Did you have one of those, Drag? Did you play Snake on your Nokia phone? Uh, the last time I think I played any kind of Snake or Worm game, I guess it was Snake, I don't know, was a browser-based game. I was killing some time somewhere. Uh, no, I didn't play it ever on a phone. And Oh, it was classical. I mean, well, unless you consider something like the old Tron games, where you're either playing the That's light the cycles thing, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, same kind of concept. Although, I, I have to say, I'm looking, you know, I, I was watching the video for this on Steam, uh, the little preview that they have for that, and I don't remember school buses having rocket launchers attached to them. Yeah, no, we don't have school buses <laughs> like that. We don't have those <laughs> butt ugly yellow ones. <laughs> no, I, I remember. Um, but, uh, no, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um I, I, I don't like remember the, the game of, of snake working that way either. You just you had to survive as long as you could without yeah. running into anything. So that's kind of a I, I guess an update on that kind of mechanic. Then they, they're allowing you to shoot out other buses. Yeah, we should probably say the game released already last year on the Windows. But for those of us playing on actual you know gaming machines, uh, PS4 coming in North America March 31st in Europe April 1st. Nintendo Switch, April 2nd, and Xbox One, April 3rd. No idea why they're staggering them like that. Um, you know, if it was for support reasons, they'd probably put a little bit more space in between them. But yeah, 31st through 3rd. And you can find lots of gameplay from it already, so you know, go check that out if you're interested. But I, I just like the idea of you're driving a bus, or there's a non-Newtonian level where you fly the bus. I just don't get it. And the symbol is normally in the old one, You every time you eat a pellet, you know, eat a pellet, you grow a segment. In this one, you pick up passengers and drop them off somewhere else, and every time you do that, you grow and you make a little bit of money, and you still have to avoid hitting yourself. 
But it's three. It looked like there was a multiplayer mode too, or at yeah. least different types of buses. So you so. can sort of combat each other, and that's where you get the rocket launcher on the school bus. There is a um, cel shaded version with nice outlining, etc. That looks really good. So um, the the pseudo realistic graphics. Eh. I think there was a Paris map. I think I saw some um, Eiffel Tower and stuff. It looks fun, but no, uh, the cel shaded looks really really nice. So it's in there. How are you picking up these passengers? Because uh, at least from the videos, they never stop. So are you running them over to pick them up, <laughs> and then booting them out the door when you drop them off? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a little bit like uh, the olds are built in drive-by that you sort of just run uh, people over. Oh, well, there you go. And then pass by, and they just sort of just fall out of the bus when they get to their stop. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's a fun take of really old style really old format game um, I, I love that somebody can update it that dramatically and that I get to play it on PlayStation yay there's no yeah, Mac version you, you can play it on the Switch don't worry <laughs> All right, and coming up on the 2nd of April, Dread Tides, a strategy game set in a... This this is almost a little bit of a, in some ways I feel like an oxymoron, um, set in a post-apocalyptic fantasy world. Um, typically, post-apocalyptic stuff is... Well, I, at least I'm used to it mostly being futuristic stuff. Um, but this, uh, I guess the society never got a chance to get past the uh, old-school medieval... Um, Oh man, I just had a brain fart, but uh, they were never able to get past medieval times before their uh, world went to hell. <laughs> yeah, but in, in fantasy scenarios, this seems, you know, most fantasy games. I'm going to take one out of a really old book, Dragonlance. Right? The Cataclysm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it happens in a lot of scenarios. We just keep going, oh, it's post apocalyptic. That means we need to have the. Uh, Tires cut up and uses clothing, right? Yeah, I guess that's Gas one way to do armor and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I like the idea. Something happened, things went to shit, and now this city has to build out and protect itself. So it's sort of like I, I noted it as a low poly city builder slash tower defense slash resource management game. Because interesting enough, the developers don't put really any genre to it. It's just like, yeah, we made a game. Good, 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 good on you. Um, yeah, I see different user tags set up as strategy and tower defense. Uh, yeah, there's know, with definitely regards tower to how defense. they're classifying it. Yeah. Um, Dread Tides, though, uh, it gives me Warhammer feelings, that title. Might just be me. Um... And it also clashes with the Blade and Soul has an arena called Dread Tide. So it's one of those, I appreciate there's tens of thousands of games, you know, what, eight, nine thousand every year releasing. It's, if it clashes happen, but these guys should have Googled the title a little bit more. It's Hitbite Studio, um, which is a cute name. Uh, did some work on figuring that one out. The title of the game, though, I uh, could probably use something else. <laughs> I want to play it, I should say. I definitely want to play this. Because it's a city builder, it's tower defense, it's resource management. That's up my alley. Yeah, that's definitely up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest, right? Okay, April 8th. So we're jumping forward a tiny bit. God King, Master of Vigils by Sega. We're staying with my games, I guess. Because this yeah. is a 4X turn-based game. Um, good old hex tiles, and you go from hex tile to hex tile and figure out what the map looks like and explore it. And then, yeah, exploit the resources. But it has turn based combat, and unfortunately, people who saw my Planet 4 review know. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'll skip the combat if I can. Um, that that <laughs> part I don't care about in turn based games, uh, 4X games. But for people who like. Again, things like Planetfall, Lights, Forex, turn-based games. Um, this seems to be a fantasy setting, so when you mention Planetfall, that's its um, younger, sorry, older siblings. The previous games in that series were also fantasy-based. This is a little bit more, with a little bit lower 
quality, a little, little polygony. Cuter, definitely cuter. Um, so it's again one of those I want to play that I'm just worried about the combat in it. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier about this, but when uh, turn-based stuff was kind of making a comeback not too long ago, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I just keep seeing more and more and more turn-based stuff, and uh, I'm kind of done with it. Um, I, when, I, when I was younger and, you know, uh, turn-based is what was available before real-time, that's what I played. But as I've gotten used to real-time, I prefer that over turn-based. So, I don't know. A lot of times turn-based combat for me is just too slow. But yeah, I, can I do like that. visually. I like the way this looks, even with the uh, hex patterns for the land and stuff, yeah. and the way that things blend together. It looks really neat. It looks well made for a fairly small team. Um, as I say, they this is inspired by twenty five years of classic games, so you can kind of see it in it. Um, oh, total war! It has a significant total war feel. But the comeback is again turn-based, from what we can tell, not real-time. So it's not competing directly with it. Some of the graphics are naive. It's again, it's not AAA. Don't think so. And I think one of the the reasons to get into it is the factions, the structure of the various or well, races of factions that you can play as, the way you build your empire. So. Mm. I want to. I said I want to play this. Just don't want to play the combat part. And I think for some people just looking at it, are going to make that total war connection and want to play it because of that. Which I think would be wrong because I don't think the combat really even lives up to it. Thank you for listening to this mm. And moving on from that to one that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, is extremely topical for the times we're living in. <laughs> Something called Virus Popper. <laughs> they have a single tagline for the the, uh, the, d the description of the game. Wash your hands and start disinfecting the virus. <laughs> this comes out on the 9th of April. Uh, this is going to be out for VR. It looks like uh, Valve Index, HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, and Windows Mixed Reality. Um, I think the trailer said all the uh, platforms. Yeah, so, I mean, that's cool. Uh, it looks like you're taking things like sponges and mops and, uh, you know, I guess trying to clean up and kill viruses and beat them down. I think they even saw the picture has a toilet brush on it, too, so. <laughs> yeah. Here's a fun one. Toilet brush is actually one of the ways we spread a lot of germs around. Not so much viruses, more bacteria, but yes. Yeah, so it's it's cutesy. Um, it is. It's, it, it's kind of topical for the time. Um, it reminded me of uh, Space Pirate Trainer. If you've tried that one. I've seen it, but I haven't tried it. Okay, it's it's a good game. I like that. And it is. It's made by Starcade Arcade, um, who also made Star Blazer, where you another VR game where you sort of build a fleet and then in an arena build a fleet and then fight with another player PvP game. Um, I think you would find that interesting. You're not necessarily going to love it, but drag, uh, check the one out, Star Blazer. And the fun part is, it looks like they've taken bits and pieces because Star Blazer also has a little robot android thing. Well, not an android, but a flying robot that helps you along. And more or less the same one is in Virus Popper. So they've um, they've reused a little bit. And it's a team that's used to VR games. So Phew, Starblaze is from 2018, so they've had a couple of years on that already. If you have to cough or sneeze, yeah, it's definitely cartoony and cutesy looking. If nothing else, it reminds you of all the usual health and safety tips that we're all hearing these days. Stay away from everybody, wash your hands, yada yada yada. Well, I shouldn't say yada, they, they literally save lives. So if you have a problem remembering them, play Virus Popper. It's a free-to-play game coming out April 9th. Is it free to play? I know Steam doesn't like to list uh, prices for things for some reason. Um, well, the, I saw somewhere a trailer actually saying it was free to play. So oh, okay. Okay, cool. They might change their mind. In which case, boo. Well, no, actually. <laughs> developers deserve to be paid. So if they want to be paid, yeah. they should. Yep. Um, but I, I like the idea. So of course, somebody would make a game around this, but that it comes out fairly quickly. And if they're making you free to play, all the better. Now we have a reason to stay in and fight the virus. 
personal hygiene and safety tips. First, always wash your hands. As I've been saying, I've been playing uh, Europa Universalis, which means I've been trying to conquer Verona instead of Corona. Make sure oh, come on, that's a good one. Yeah, we've been... Uh, I've been switching back and forth lately between Division 2 and Borderlands 3, so... You really... The Division. While there's yeah. a literal pandemic and a snowstorm hitting New York. A yeah, little bit yeah. too topical. Yeah. <laughs> and In fact, I was even playing on St. Patrick's Day. And the, uh, the the hilarious part of that is the uh, the virus in the division was nicknamed the green flu. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I say that. I, I set my 13-year-old down with the stand. <laughs> <laughs> she loved it. She, she really loved the whole thing. They're, they're saying on Netflix, what is it, Outbreak or something like that is one of the, like, the most watched movies right now. Yeah. So... Um, there's another one. There's a different one over here that's one of the most watched, besides a Jean Claude Van Damme because you know Belgium. I, I I have to say, watching Outbreak right now is almost like if you've got a little tablet and you're in like a leaky raft in the middle of the ocean and you're watching Jaws. I mean, yeah. <laughs> come on. We would like to remind everyone of a few personal hygiene and. Key. Next up, do you want to do this one? I think you love nah, this game. I'll, I'll I'll let you do this one. April fourteenth. Starship Horizon Bridge Simulator by Mythric Studios LLC. It's a good thing to be a limited liability corp at this point. Multiplayer Starship Simulator, a little bit like Starfleet Bridge Command, except Starfleet Bridge Command was originally a VR game. I don't think it is anymore. Well, not only. But you can play six players taking different positions, so tactical, engineering, captain... Um, what else are there? Science officer? Can't remember. So, different positions, you choose what you play as, and then people have to communicate. And I like games where you are forced to communicate. We play TikTok. Excellent idea. Yep. Yeah. It's this, a very fun game to play. Um, I think this has the risk of being boring because not enough happens for any one player. In combat, you are primarily relying on the tactical officer and engineering. And then other times you're relying on the science of so I think the positions are not com constantly engaged in the same way as you would want to have in a multiplayer game. No, you don't. You want this second to second, five second to five second experience. Where I think this one will have people waiting around, depending on what's going on. One well, and. and the marketing for this one it's just some pictures of different ships and some other screenshots i really think that you uh, missed one of them then oh uh, well there's a picture where they put up a projector onto a really wide screen oh yeah and they had a pile of arduinos with touch screens and a pile of tablets with touch screens so people could spread out and play and still look at that big screen that central screen um a little bit like a starfleet well, bridge. Right, but it, in that kind of environment, yeah, I'm sure it's probably interesting to play through, but I, I feel like they need to have some kind of video play, like demo play, not it, something they that shows need. people playing the game yeah. and having fun. Yeah, because really, ah, oh man, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going, I don't know who this... Well, I guess maybe Eve players might want to play. <laughs> oh, I, I could I could see Eve in a multiplayer setting, multi uh, control ships in Eve. That I think some of them would love it. A lot of them would hate it because Eve has this whole let. This is my ship. I'm responsible. Eve players yeah. would would have issues with other players having any kind of impact on whether they lose their ship. Partly because these ships Don't are expensive. That. <laughs> um, whereas this, it doesn't have the same investment, therefore it's less critical. But I know you have your land... Oh, <laughs> we just talked about virus power, didn't we? You used to have your land sessions. <laughs> They'll be back. <laughs> yeah. But imagine that you do, as one of these land sessions, you get together with all your mates. Whether you play on PC or one of you on phone, iPads, Chromebooks, whatever. And you get to play together like that. I know you guys are Wolf and Doomers. You need that whole let's shoot things thing. <laughs> but it would be that kind of setting. You know, get together with friends, sitting in a living room, playing together. 
just like we did with TikTok. Well, you and I played over the internet, but the advertisement for TikTok often showed people sitting at different ends of a sofa. Yeah. Line people up in the sofa. We have a nice sofa that, you know, angled and people can sit everywhere. And play together. That's that's how this should be played. In a group with your mates. Preferably slightly drunk. Yeah, definitely the last part. Yeah. <laughs> I think talking shit. So, I, I think this could be an excellent game. It's not the only one of its kind. Um... But done right. I think the graphics are too early. Yes, there are pictures of nice ships. The graphics there is outright naive. The, the ships are not awesome looking. They need to hire some, yeah, some new developers, new graphic people. The screens are a little bit naive, but they're functional. Um, you know, press here, turn on shield. So, mm, it needs more cooking. Is that fair? Yeah. Well, students. I would say just based on the material that they're sharing, it looks like it needs more cooking, but we have absolutely no idea of how yeah. old that material is. So, um, I mean, if they want to pay for the f- three, four, five of us, we can probably get together on our team to uh, to play it. We will, definitely. <laughs> it will require a handful of airline tickets, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but a couple also, of months for this whole other thing to pass over. <laughs> yeah. But also, I mean... Um, one of the things you don't see so much in EVE, etc., but I'm a Kerbal Space Program player, or at least I used to be. And there, doing custom setups is a thing. You see it also in flight sims, a lesser degree in uh, racing sims for cars. People do like all little cockpits for cars. And because they've added in Arduino and touchscreen setup, you're meant to, if you really get into it, to make a, a play area. So I can see this at uh, conventions. I can see this at places where people get get together to look at games or, or come together to look at games. Game see, I can see something like this, yeah, working in, in an environment like that or in something like a Dave and Buster's where it's set up for two to four people to I go in no and idea play. What that is. Uh, yeah, you're right. I didn't explain that. I apologize. Dave and Buster's is uh, it's it's a restaurant and bar that also has a bunch of video games. And as you play video games, you get tickets for the you know time spent or score that you get or whatever. Uh, it mixes in carnival style games um, with okay. actual video games, everything from racing and shooting and platforming games. You know other things that you can play. Um, and it's a place where you can go get dinner, have a few beers, and play some games. So. Yeah. I'm thinking um, things like GameStop, where you know they they keep play, complaining that nobody shows up to look at the games. Have something like this, even if it's just one that goes on tour from store to store, but have in-store events, have in-store games that people can come and play. I think that yeah, can I mean, that something can like change. this would take up quite a bit of floor space, though. This could, yeah. But if you go to Apple stores, the way people just hang out in Apple stores it makes fuck all sense to me. But people hang out in Apple stores. Give them I a reason. No, I don't go to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give give people a reason to hang out in your store, and I think something like this is it. So I I'm fully on board with what they're making. I can understand that it's difficult to make a commercial success out of it because it is, yeah, naive graphics and not something you just play by yourself. But uh, put it into the right scenario that uh, Peter and Buster thing that you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> So, a moment ago, you mentioned Kerbal Space Program. Yep. Uh, which, you know, immediately, uh, one of the, the, the next game on the list is something that I would kind of, in some ways, associate with that similarly. Uh, so, we got a chance to talk to uh, one of the developers for Main Assembly a little while back. We'll make sure there's a link in the description so you can Mike. check that out if you like. Mike. Mm-hmm. Yep. And... They're coming out onto Steam in early access on the 16th of April. Yay. So that's, yeah, he was fun to talk to. Uh, just getting to sit there and watch him do, do you know, different things <laughs> while we were talking to him with, yeah. you know, all the different stuff that you can build in this engine. It's, it's really neat. And some of the screenshots of the things that they show off in the videos are pretty impressive. Mike is kind of impressive with some of the stuff he just randomly builds. He's he's figured out how to do stuff in his game. Um, yeah. Which is nice because we often see developers don't. I think for people who like to build shit, this is it. This is um, 
but you just you, you just build and use it and then there's some mini games that you can play it isn't full on like Kerbal Space Program where there's now go up to moon go do this go do that that's not there yet and I think then eventually they'll need they'll need something in in engine in game that makes people do next step next step X beyond just the tutorials the tutorials are okay um, I actually broke them but <laughs> for, for if you like to build stuff this is it because the build is just that flexible it is an awesome build engine where you just say well I want a plate here I want a thing here I want a thing there and then you just bend them and whoops you have whatever it is you want to build as opposed to many games where it's either pre-configured blocks like Kerbal Space Program or uh, Space Engineers where it's just cubes and you put this cube and that cube this is a lot more freedom in building and it's one, just one, well, I was going to say one of the coolest things about something like this a game like this is just getting to see what the community does with it yeah this has a slightly longer TTP but you can make yeah. some much more advanced P's <laughs> yeah uh, I'm sure it won't take too long before something like that shows up on Steam <laughs> I just like to the tutorial that goes, oh, you here's a vehicle and you have to modify it because it's too wide to build, fit through the door. At which point I went, nope, and then got it through the damn door. <laughs> so, Fuck you, game. I win. Uh. No, it's go back, uh, watch the episode. It's actually the first one we did on camera. Mm. With, uh, yeah, Mike Pazau from Bad Joke Games, whom we met at Gamescom and had a laugh. Oh, I, I, I keep thinking back to that one day. He sat me down and went, oh, now let's talk through our rehearsed presentation for 30 minutes of our game. And I just kept asking questions that ruined their presentation. You could just see it on the face. This is not what we rehearsed. <laughs> uh, gee, much much the same in real life as he is playing games online. He tries Squirrel? to do it wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think you intentionally try to do things wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I think things should be done wrong. So a little while ago, you mentioned what was it, nineteen eighty-nine or something like that. Eighty-six. Um, I might be off. Yeah. I can't remember. When did Johnny? Five I don't know. Out? But if, if not not too far from that, if we go back to say, I don't know, maybe the uh, early mid nineties, uh, if you've ever wanted to control your own team of hackers, I don't know if you remember the uh, the movie Hackers. Yeah, but, I can. Uh, That's one of the best movies around. Oh, it was definitely an enjoyable movie. I, I definitely enjoyed it. But uh, out on well, the 16th, for what it also is, also in uh, early access, is Cyber Attack. Yeah. Cyber Attack is a little bit weird game, I'm going to say. I just double checked. I was off. No, I wasn't. I was the second one. Short Circuit, Journey 5, 1986. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, stale for those things. It's all about the beeping in the background if that comes through. So Cyber Attack has me slightly puzzled. It's an interesting idea. The visuals, for people who are into IT, might have seen like um, Threat Map, which is an online tool where you can sort of see what's going on in the world in terms of attacks on the interwebs, like DDoSs and exploits and phishing attacks. And it's, it's made like here's some earth and then little lines jumping around mm -hmm. and cyber attacks doing the same thing where you then pretend to be a hacker hacking things by launching attacks or other kinds of attacks because some of the things that show us aren't necessarily just hacking I think this is an interesting game um, it, it does the whole that other games have done as well you can hack other companies or hack corporations to get money it's a high risk high award kind of thing or you can protect people you can play, play as an altruistic thing um, but it's single player and looking at it I think this could work in some kind of slow online game that you could play over days or weeks are you talking about turn based? <laughs> no there, there's a type of game that is time limited where you get you know, action points over time up to a certain maximum and then you can expense one or more whenever you want to. I think that could work here. 
So any given yeah. attack takes a certain amount of action points. Um, I think that that's more interesting to me. Uh, Luxo Interactive, the developers behind Cyber Attack, seem to have an interesting uh, setup. I just, from looking at it, I think it gets boring relatively quickly. It's a, yeah, it definitely is for like a, a certain group of folks who enjoy yeah. that style of game. Um, but just because it's single player, don't think that means that there isn't going to be anybody attacking you because, uh, you know, they basically say that there are ro- like rogue groups of, of other hackers that can be hired by, in, for instance, they mentioned in the description, corrupted politicians uh, <laughs> to basically hunt, you know, hunt you down and hack you. So, yeah. um, hack the planet. <laughs> If you want a proper one, Sneakers. Better movie. Sneakers was good too, yeah. Better movie. Uh, that, do you, that was do you Robert want to, Redford, wasn't it? It was. Hackers. Yeah. Um, oh, I can never remember. The, the guys. It's Angelina Jolie and some idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, that guy also plays uh, Sick Boy in um, Train Spot. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he plays. Uh, Sherlock in the uh, Sherlock yep. that's set in New York. I, it's just that image. The Sherlock and the Sick Boy, I can see that's the same fucking character. Sorry. <laughs> the Sick Boy cleaned up his act and went to New York. It's, isn't his name Johnny something? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm horrendous with names. I apologize. But just that sneaker's personality in between. Just. Okay. <laughs> so. He had more hair back then. Hmm. This is true. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I was going to say, didn't we all? But then you have this huge mane of hair. That's I have more hair now down. than ever before. <laughs> I have never been this hairy. Yeah, let's change topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of hell. <laughs> Uh, the next game on our list is one called Hellpoint, also due out on the 16th of April. Uh, so this is an action RPG. Um, I gotta say, like, what attracted me to this was just looking at it visually, uh, and then looking at some of the way that the gameplay is. You know, you're supposed to go through like third person, you know, action RPG combat style. I can't tell if this is meant to be Dark Souls like or not. Uh, it does kind of have that look and feel to it. I don't know if that's how, if the gameplay is going to be that difficult or not, but um, anyway, from what I could it gather, it's less punishing, but it becomes more punishing as you play it. Not just as you go from area to area, but if you go back to an area, the area gets harder. And there is an element of you could open these rifts and then pay to lower the difficulty in an area. No. Oh. Sort of like you're paying. Playing, paying with souls, like in the Soul series. So there is something there, um, and yeah, the combat mechanics seem very much based on this, you know, slow, anticipated, careful combat that punishes you if you fuck up. <laughs> and it, uh, as well, if you die, you lose your equipment. You can go back and get it, but if you die again before getting it, it's completely lost. So there are punishing elements. The Dark Souls is there. But then it's futuristic, it's sci-fi, it's a space station or a space city. So there's some dead space going on there. And yeah. And my take was, do you remember the old uh, Event Horizon movie? Adventure what? Event Horizon. It's a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. That is reaching back a ways, yeah. Come on, that's later than uh, Short Circuit. Yeah, yeah. True. Barely, but yeah. Um... <laughs> Take those three, I think you get it. Because um, I was looking at going, okay, so this is Event Horizon on Deep Space Nine. <laughs> okay. With Dead but Space. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's the idea that you have a sci fi setting, but he's running around with sword and shield and axe, and. I don't get it. Wouldn't you have laser guns? It's, 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 it's well, I did see that there was something where it looked like there was some kind of ranged stuff, but I don't know if he's. I don't know if that's a mechanical, technological type uh, weapon or if he's firing magic, so... Yeah. So. Me neither. Um, they had a Kickstarter. It succeeded. The game's coming out. 
you're going to hate it because it's control based or they recommend control us. So, poor drag. Graphics looks good though, you're right about that. It looks like it could be fun. <laughs> I I'm, I like action adventure games I'm playing some right now. This I think I would skip. It just looks like it's there to punish people. Dark Souls doesn't do it for me. Hmm. I want action adventure games with a story in it, not just run around chopping things. Yes, Dark Souls has a story. Shut up. They told us to follow the stars. <laughs> you want the story to be the primary focus, not come second to the gameplay. We kneel. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, April 18th, Confusion ZMVR, um, which is a VR game. So I'm assuming the VR in the studio's title is uh, VR. No idea about the ZM. This is yeah, a... You... Sorry? Oh, I was going to say, one thing we had said it was the 18th. Steam is saying the 17th for some reason, so... Okay. Could be the 17th, could be the 18th. One of well, those days. I looked somewhere it's the 18th, so... Meh. Yeah. Uh... Kung Fusion, so it's yeah, it's a kung fu game where you have to <laughs> kung fu enemies that come at you in VR. So, I, the reason why this one caught my attention was it kind of it reminded me of when Beat Saber just went off the rail. Well, not really off the rails, but like got huge popularity. Mm. And so I was kind of thinking, like, is this the next Beat Saber where people are going to be playing this? rhythm game and it's like you know kung fu combat and <laughs> what was it uh what was the movie kung fu hustle <laughs> yeah see you're you're touching on it because this is beat saber but instead of having just abstract shapes and everything you're in different levels that are meant to look like something like a space station what have you and you're not hitting geometric shapes you're hitting humanoid shapes and you have an actual stick that you can do things with instead of just things that, you know. And I think that's where this one fails. Its selling point is specifically that you have a Kung Fu stick, which I don't think is a thing, and that you're hitting humanoid shapes. And that I makes it... I think it's it called a bow staff. Kung Fu stick. Yeah, but that's that's the whole thing. They keep talking about Kung Fu. And bows are quite a bit longer than the thing they show in there. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, you can't exactly determine, but it does look like it's not necessarily that long. Yeah, but I think it's two halves, so there's a thing on each side of your arm. So, do, 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 do. Um, red, blue crystal that you have to hit the red and blue men. But it's the fact that it's humanoids and that it's more realistic, I think, makes it less appealing. Beat Saber is purely about the beat and hitting those elements. It's not what you're hitting, but it's the challenge of it. This suddenly adds that it's humanoid that detracts from it. So, Well, and how quickly these things are coming at you, too. You're still doing it on the beat. It's just that, man, these things are they are coming at you at almost light speed. <laughs> and they're not... Beat Saber has this long view that you can see things coming at you even when it's at the angles. Remember to turn. These just come in right in front of you. They are... They're, they're coming in too close. And it, the only way that you beat this game is by memorizing tick, 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 each movement. Whereas in Beat Saber, if you're good enough, you can play any level. Hmm. I, there'll probably be some aspect of that to this too. I mean, I think there's there's that way with any rhythm game. Once you can oh, yeah. get the flow and you know memorize what you're doing. But um, you, this game, Confusion, is much more on memorization than Beat Saber. Beat Saber just has a beat, and that you can see what's coming at you from miles away, and that it's clear, it's simple, it's yeah, it's a clean view in Beat Saber. Confusion fails on that. I, I understand I what they're trying, think, but... Mm -mm. Yeah, I agree with you. I think going with the humanoids instead of like some type of target or object coming at you or something that you're supposed shapes, to bash away. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that, that might have been a better choice um, just because this stuff comes at you so fast. Uh, it, you hardly get a look at it before you smack it and it disappears. 
Nah, um, it, it's it's because, I, in my opinion, it's going to be the fact that it's humanoids. It's going to be off-putting to a lot of people. Where Beat Saber mm. just keeps it clean, and you don't care what it is you're hitting. You're just waving your hands around in time, right? Yeah. 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 Here, you're, you're thinking about what you're hitting, and that's going to be distracting. And it's going to be an uncomfortable one, because the humanoid shape. <laughs> it's saying. Um, it's not a it's not bad game. There's some bad design elements in the whole how close they pop in. Um, it's just going to be off-putting for some. Okay, well, do you want to do last I one? guess that brings us to the last game on our list of uh, top ten games, indie games to check out for April. Title top Shock. 10. Ooh, top ten, yeah. really? Well, I mean, I told you before we started this list, it was supposed to be the top ten worth looking at. Eh, top 10 worth talking about. <laughs> With the disclaimer, well, Drax specifically said no hentai games. <laughs> That's, you know, we target a wide audience, why do you think? <laughs> Just not that wide. <laughs> not saying anything. Yeah, I know. So, title shock. Um, third person arena. Uh, this one, think, I guess the the... The common descriptor I'm seeing is, I uh, think, like Fortnite underwater, in a way. So, arena shooter, you're underwater. I think you compared it to Subnautica in some ways. Uh, I think, really, the only reason that comparison would exist is just because of the fact that it's an underwater game. Yeah, precisely. I don't think it... Re- yeah, it doesn't really look like Subnautica. So. No, I, 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 I refer to it as a less pretty Subnautica third-person arena yeah. shooter. Because it's nowhere near as pretty as Subnautica. It's nowhere near as interesting. Uh, and it's an arena shooter where Subnautica is an exploration game. Um, but the reason for it is the moment I saw the trailer, I just clicked and went, okay, show me a trailer for it. And it's like, ooh, swimming around and with other people, yes, please. That's the thing everybody keeps screaming about for Subnautica. We want co-op. But then this turned out to be a shooter and immediately got meh. <laughs> It's a bubbly wolf and doom. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And also, Fortnite is, is unfair because Fortnite is a whole lot more players. This is 4 to 8 player. Well, true. Yeah, with regards to the number of people in a match, yeah. And the only... No, I was just thinking more like character design and look of the world. It's yeah. got that kind of you know animated cartoonish look to it. Uh, some of the costumes that people are wearing for... You know, the rubber swimming around and shooting each other are kind of goofy in the in the same vein of things like you might expect to see, you know, yeah. in Fortnite. So, the only game mode I found in it was Capture the Flag, which is they change it so you have to charge a reactor, and it's it has the only interesting element that the closer you get to the flag, the reactor, the more the player starts glowing, so you, they become more and more visible. That, uh, that could add an element of interest to the game. Besides that, no. You're not supposed to touch your face. You're going to corona your I nose. I know, I know. But I washed my hands before we started, so... Yeah, you should probably also wash your face. <sighs> I can see your face. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, Title Shock, if you like those third-person things with... You know, a different play style because it's no longer flat. Um, sure. So the free movement well, thing. I, yeah, I don't think there's any building to it either. So. Yeah. So it, there is not Subnautica at all, except the swimming. And also, um, somebody please make me a co-op Subnautica. Really, really want that. <laughs> all right. So on that note, I uh, hope you enjoyed at least one of the games that we brought your attention to for the following month. Um, Snakey boss. Snakey boss. <laughs> Oh, God. (laughs) But, uh, you know, with that, we are going to get out of here. Uh, As always, we appreciate your support. Uh, For those of you who have been supporting us, uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, a like, share, follow, all of those things, all the buttons, all the thumbs up, the bells, the dings. We appreciate it. You sound so enthusiastic while you're saying that. I apologize. It's been a long few days. You get stuck in the same place doing the same thing. (laughs) <laughs> it's called work and being an adult I'm just saying 
We'd be and doing who wants to do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> so. ah, dude, it's coming up at one at night. Yeah. Yeah. People, go click the buttons, lick all the things. Uh, no, don't lick things. <laughs> like things. <laughs> and you don't get to give me shit about touching my face if you're telling people to lick things. <laughs> as long as it's themselves or other people. I mean, people have approved it. Pre approved licking. I don't know. <laughs> There are links to all the shovel? games. Yes. <laughs> there are links to all the things down below or in the descriptions, depending on where you're listening. And we shall be back next week with another episode. Somehow, somewhere. Same bad channel, same bad YouTube channel. That's the fun thing about this. Since we always do this stuff electronically online, we can keep doing it. Yay. Have a nice one. Ciao.